Now we are showing you a documentary of a man who is called a murderer, how he reared cattle and from whom he leased cattle and how he continued to defraud people with the help of insurance. And in what area did he go and take refuge and what did he do there that caused him to hide and in what manner was he caught and what was the punishment given to him and despite how was he able to be released and finally how did he leave this world and where was he buried? You will get to see this documentary in this video. You must watch this informative video without wasting time. William King Hale, December 24, 1874 to August 15, 1962, was an American politician and crime leader from Osage County, Oklahoma, who was convicted of the Osage Indian killings. He amassed a fortune from cattle ranching, contract killings, and insurance fraud. Hale was born in Hunt County, Texas and worked as a cowboy in Texas and Indian Territory until settling in what is now Osage County around 1900. By the 1920s he had gained significant power in the area when he ordered the contract killings of Osage woman Molly Kyle's family as part of a criminal conspiracy to seize control of their head rights. He was convicted in federal court for ordering the murder of Henry Roan in October 1929, sentenced to life in prison. He was freed on parole in July 1947. Hale died in Arizona in 1962. David Grant's 2017 book Killers of the Flower Moon focuses heavily on his role in the deaths. Robert De Niro played him in Martin Scorsese's 2023 film adaptation of the novel. Early Life William Hale was born in Hunt County, Texas on December 24, 1874. His mom died when he was three years old. He started working as a cowboy in West Texas when he was 16 years old and by the age of 18, he was grazing cattle on the Kiowa Comanche Reservation in Indian Territory. He moved to the Osage Nation, then Oklahoma Territory, now Osage County, Oklahoma, around the turn of the century and by 1900 his wife had joined him where they lived in a tent and tended cattle. In 1905 he relocated to Gray Horse, an Osage hamlet, to operate a ranch and in 1907 he joined with local financiers to purchase his own ranch. Hale was apparently ignorant, yet he made a fortune through insurance fraud and unethical trading with the native Osage people. In a 1932 memo to FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, Tom White, the special agent in charge of Hale's investigation, stated that Hale eventually became a millionaire and controlled local politics. Appearing unaccountable for his actions, he declared himself King of the Osage and possessed a controlling position in the Fairfax Bank as well as a portion of the town's general store and funeral home. He also served as Fairfax's reserve deputy sheriff. In addition, he possessed a 5,000 acre, 20 square kilometers ranch and leased another 45,000 acres, 180 square kilometers from Osage landowners. Murder. Hale and his nephews, Ernest and Byron Burkhart, planned to murder several Osage people for their head rights after Ernest married Molly Kyle, a native Osage. In May 1921, Hale hired Kelsey Morrison to murder Molly's sister, Anna Brown. Morrison later confessed to the murder, claiming Hale hired him in exchange for forgiving a $600 debt he owed. Her mother, Lizzie Q, acquired half of Anna's head rights and died exactly 60 days later. Her other heirs included Molly, Retta Smith, and Grace Bighart. Charles Whitehorn, a relative, was shot and killed a few weeks later. Anna Sanford died in strange circumstances in March 1922, shortly after marrying Tom McCoy. After Sanford died, McCoy married Hale's niece. After drinking poisoned whiskey in 1923, George Bighart was transported to Oklahoma City for treatment. Hale and Ernest took Big Heart to the hospital where he requested to see his attorney, William Vaughn. The following day, after speaking with Big Heart, Vaughn was assassinated on a railroad right-of-way outside Pahuska, Oklahoma. Big Heart died as well. In March 1923, Retta Smith, her husband, and a housekeeper were killed when their home was attacked. Molly inherited Retta's head rights. Molly later developed signs of poisoning. Molly became unwell, but she eventually found the poisoning and recovered when she moved away. She later divorced Ernest and their children received Molly's inheritance. 
Hale's whole plan is thought to have included the unfulfilled killings of Molly, Ernest, and their children, leaving the Kyle Burkhardt estate entirely to Hale. Investigations Hale was a segregationist and a prominent Democratic Party member in Osage County. He wielded great power over the local Osage County prosecutor. During his election campaign, the prosecutor sought Hale's endorsement and received it, winning every precinct surrounding Hale's property. During the original inquiry into Anna Brown's death, Hale used his connection to speak with local investigators. After Henry Roan's body was discovered in a gully, Hale went with the deputy and marshal to recover it. Furthermore, in 1921, Hale engaged a private detective to check into the deaths. The investigator eventually told federal authorities that he was paid not to solve the killings, but to fabricate evidence and teach witnesses to shape an alibi for Hale and his associates. A Bureau of Inquiry BOI study finally stated that the Chief of Ponca City Police, Chief of Fairfax Police, Osage County Prosecutor, and local Office of Indian Affairs agent were all under Hale's sway and would be unable to assist with the inquiry. The Osage Nation Tribal Council asked the Bureau of Investigation to investigate the murders. The Bureau dispatched undercover operatives to investigate. Investigators initially struggled to obtain witnesses with Dick Gregg, a former member of the Al Spencer gang, being the only living witness. Gregg informed detectives that Hale had tried to pay the Al Spencer gang to kill Bill and Retta Smith, but Spencer, the group's leader, declined because killing a woman was not my style. Gregg directed detectives to Al Spencer, Henry Grammer, and Curly Johnson for more information, but all three individuals had died. Eventually, a safecracker affiliated with Grammer named Asa Kirby as the bomber. However, before agents could interview Kirby, he was shot dead in a failed jewel heist. Investigators suspected Hale of orchestrating the death by informing Kirby and the store owner about a prospective diamond robbery. Following this revelation, investigators began to suspect Hale was murdering witnesses, with some alleging he tampered with Grammer's car brakes and poisoned Johnson. Bert Lawson, a prisoner in McAllister, Oklahoma, eventually testified that Hale and Ernest Burkhardt had told him to plant the explosive device in the Smith's home. Hale raised additional suspicions when he filed a lawsuit to collect Henry Roan's life insurance policy. Hale purchased the life insurance policy in 1921. After his initial application was declined, he reapplied to a second life insurance firm with a memorandum signed by Roan certifying that Roan owed Hale $25,000 and was granted. When receiving the requisite doctor's evaluation for the policy, the doctor questioned Hale, Bill, what are you going to do, kill this Indian? Hale responded, hell yes. Agents were also tipped off when they discovered that the order and manner of the murders appeared to be designed to maximize Molly's inheritance. For example, Anna Brown was murdered immediately after her divorce to guarantee that her inheritance went to her family rather than her former spouse. Retta and Bill Smith were killed in the same bombing, triggering a stipulation in their will that stated they would die simultaneously. On January 4, 1926, a warrant was issued for Hale and Ernest's arrest in connection with the deaths of Bill and Retta Smith. Ernest was captured promptly, but Hale could not be located. According to David Gran, Hale later brought himself and dressed in a perfectly pressed suit, shoes shined to a gleam, a felt hat, and an overcoat with his diamond-studded Masonic Lodge pin fastened to the lapel. Hale maintained his innocence, but federal investigators focused on grilling Ernest. He broke and turned state's evidence when confronted with outlaw Blackie Thompson, who had been in state custody for murdering a police officer. Willing to testify that Ernest attempted to hire him to do the murders, when faced with Ernest's testimony, Hale maintained his innocence. The Department of Justice wanted Hale tried in federal court, fearing his possible influence over Oklahoma state courts. However, a federal judge found that the killing, which occurred on an unalienated allotment, belonged within the jurisdiction of Oklahoma courts. Sergeant Prentice Freeling, former Oklahoma Attorney General, represented Hale in legal matters. The case was transferred to state court and his first hearing was on March 12th. According to David Gran, he recited a poem to his supporters in the courtroom. Judge not.
The mists of apparent guilt may darken thy brother's reputation. For fate may cast mistrust on the brightest name. While on trial in 1926, Hale sold his property to the Drummond and Mullendores families. The ranch land was eventually divided up and sold to smaller ranchers. Trials In July 1926, Hale and John Ramsey were prosecuted in federal court in Guthrie, Oklahoma for the murder of Henry Roan after the United States Supreme Court case United States v. Ramsey, 1926 which established federal court jurisdiction. By the time of their first trial, Ernest Burkhart had been convicted to life in Oklahoma courts. The jury's deliberations began on August 20. And five days later, Hale and Ramsey's first trial ended in a hung jury. Following the first trial, multiple witnesses were charged, tried, and convicted for accepting bribes or providing threatened testimony. Hale and Ramsey's second trial was set for late October. The trial was shifted to Oklahoma City. Ernest testified that Hale paid Ramsey a new Ford and $500 to murder Roan. Hale rejected the charges, claiming that he was at a livestock show in Fort Worth at the time of the Smith's house explosion and had no reason to wish Roan dead. Jury deliberations began on October 28th and the next morning the jury found them both guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced them to life imprisonment. Hale appealed and was retried. The case was retried in federal court in Guthrie, Oklahoma, but the jury remained hung. The second trial in Oklahoma City yielded another guilty verdict, this time for 99 years. Hale appealed to the United States Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit, which ordered a new trial. Hale was tried one final time in federal court in Pahuska, Oklahoma, Leavenworth Penitentiary. On October 29, 1929, he was convicted in federal court of murdering Henry Roan and sentenced to the Leavenworth Penitentiary in Kansas. Tom White, the man in charge of the investigation into the Osage Indian murders, served as the warden throughout his incarceration. Hale worked in the tuberculosis unit and on a prison farm. Throughout his term, he never admitted to the murders and a psychological assessor stated that he has put behind him any feeling of shame or repentance he may have had. Parole and Death Hale was condemned to life in jail but was granted parole on July 31, 1947. During a visit, Hale's relatives claim he once commented, if that damn Ernest had kept his mouth shut, we'd be rich today. He migrated to Phoenix, Arizona in 1950 and died in a nursing home on August 15, 1962. He is buried in Wichita, Kansas. Legacy In order to reduce the number of Osage Indian murders, the United States Congress approved legislation in 1925 prohibiting non-Osage persons from inheriting Osage hedge rights from Osage people with more than half-blood quantum. Later, in 1978, Congress amended the 1925 legislation, removing the blood quantum requirement and adding language that extended inheritance of Osage mineral hedge rights to legally adopted Osage children. Osage and non-Osage, and their descendants, in addition to their direct lineal heirs. In the media, David Grant's 2017 book Killers of the Flower Moon identifies Hale as the mastermind of murders, providing thorough proof. In Martin Scorsese's 2023 film adaption, Hale was played by Robert De Niro. So friends, before you go, please let us know that we have made this video on the history with great effort. Tell us how you liked it in the comments below and connect with us by subscribing to our channel and pressing the bell button. Do it! If you want to know about any history, you can definitely give us ideas in the comments below. Next time we will make a video according to you.